here and still see Is everybody ready to go? It's Proclaim the Greatest Radio Show Welcome everyone to The Spread. I'm your host Jim Sella here with Jay Dash. Going to keep moving on with our camp battles episodes. Going to start with the tight ends today. Dash, big move for the Steelers in the offseason. They re- they released tight end Ladarius Green after a one-year failed project with a guy who has a history of injuries and who reportedly, now they're saying he hid those injuries. But that could just be the Steelers spreading this information to make fans a little more forgiving. Yeah, I called it right at the end of last season. I didn't believe he was going to come back, and he did not. And, I mean, you could see it on the field, man. What he do? Touched the ball 12 times last season. And every time he touched it, man, he either got smoked in the head by some dude or his head smashed right off the <laughs> ground, man. I mean, I, I, I knew his career had to be coming to an end soon, so it's not a big surprise to me. So the Steelers are left with, uh, what, third-year tight end now, Jesse James from Penn State. The old veteran, David Johnson, who's basically just a blocking tight end at this point in his career. Uh, Ex- Xavier Grimble, or is it Xavier? I, I know sometimes... I think it's, it's Xavier. Different. Xavier Grimble, okay. And Scott Orndoff, he was a free a- unrestricted free agent signing, I believe, right after the draft. I think he might have played at Pitt, honestly. I can't remember. But he, he honestly, he might make the team, but he, he's not really going to push for playing time, so... And there's another guy on the practice squad or could be on the practice squad, but we don't really care about him. I mean, this is why I said I wanted them to go after O.J. Howard in the draft. Like I said, I knew Ladarius Green it just wasn't going to cut it. That's why I wanted them to go after Howard. They ended up not going after a tight end at all. And now it's Jesse James really in the passing game, and that's that's about it. And he's still working on his blocking at this point. Let me ask you this. Would you rather have them taken, maybe not if they, O.J. Howard, because I, I, I kind of figured they were going to go linebacker or, or DB in the first round, but would you rather have them taken a good tight end in the second round or Juju Schuster Smith or Juju Smith Schuster? Who offers more to the passing game? You know, another quality wide receiver? Well, he or does a, if, a if he gets enough playing time. I mean, it depends on where he ends up. Uh, in this wide receiver set you know what I mean they they definitely need a tight end out there you know so uh, I don't know it depends on how good Juju ends up being if he ends up being a mediocre third receiver then I I say you should have went after the tight end but if he turns into a number two that you could uh, replace Martavis with if something happens to him then I would say Juju would be the better pick so I think we both agree that Jesse James, as of right now, is kind of penciled in as the starter. Uh, he's a third-year guy, like we said. He's a decent pass catch. You know what? He's a good pass catcher, but he's not the most athletic guy when he has the ball in his hand or out on the field. And I'm not saying that he's a big stumbling moron out there, but he's not as athletic as some of these other guys that you see coming out of college and some of these other tight ends you see putting up big numbers. I think James is somebody who's sure-handed, who, like you said, has to work on his blocking. Hopefully he is because he's a little shaky in that area, and the Steelers like to run the ball. But I think he's a serviceable starting tight end. I think he'll put up decent numbers if he plays every game at the starting position. But when I say decent, I'm talking like 35 catches for maybe 400 yards or something like that. I'm not I'm not saying Heath Miller type numbers. Yeah, he's a good check down target, uh, and I get I guess he's a decent red zone target as well. You see him uh, come up with a couple touchdowns this season. I'd have to believe. Now, last year, you liked Xavier Grimble a little bit, especially you know coming into the season. He he put up some decent numbers in preseason played well when he got some playing time do you think he's a legit second tight end or you think it's going to just be David Johnson in kind of I don't want to say phase the tight end out of the offense a little bit this year but maybe not feature it as much as they would have liked to well I I don't remember liking Xavier Grimble that much going into last season I guess I didn't hate him I didn't say cut him or anything but I don't remember maybe I did who knows but no you you wanted to keep him on the team whenever we talked about who we were going to cut near the end of the preseason Okay, uh, I mean, I guess he's a decent number two, but given that Jesse James is our number one, I'd like to have a little bit better number two, I guess. I don't know, man. I think Jesse James is borderline number two, number one, you know? Yeah, I kind of see it as we have a number two, three as our one, two tight ends because I'm not totally sold on Jesse James as a number one. And I'm not hating. 
I'm not saying that he has no chance of coming out. Maybe he trimmed up in the offseason a little bit or, or worked on, you know, his pass catching or something. I haven't really seen him. I haven't heard too much about it. I just know that from what he's shown us so far, he's he's serviceable. I, I would give him maybe somewhere between 20 and 27 as I rank tight ends, you know, in the NFL. Well, I didn't look at all the tight ends in the NFL, but I don't know. I hope he exceeds that this season. I think he can exceed that a little bit. I think he could get into the top 20. I think he could be a good red zone target, which would help him out. So maybe he ends up with 40 catches for 400 yards, but like six, seven touchdowns. I would take that out of him. Yeah, if he's scoring touchdowns, I really don't care what else he does because Antonio Brown and Levy on Bell can get you into the red zone. Believe it. We definitely need somebody who's big and physical in the red zone. I think that's why they like Juju. He's a bit of a big guy, too. Uh, Bryant should offer things. But with all these weapons on the outside and James having, uh, being, I don't know, just not really valued as a great tight end around the league, do you think he has a chance at kind of slipping through the cracks and kind of have a big early part of the season and then maybe teams start paying attention to him? I mean, think about it. If you have Brown, Bryant, Bell, even Eli Rogers and Juju. I mean, if you have all these weapons out there, James Conner can even be out there. Uh, somebody's going to not be covered as well, and James could honestly take over and take advantage of that. I don't know if it'll happen early in the season. I think it, teams got to, or I think Martavis Bryant got to earn his the respect back from the defense, and I think Juju got to earn respect still too. So if those two step up, maybe as the season goes along, uh, things start to open up for Jesse James a little bit. Obviously, Antonio Brown's going to be double covered at least over there. If Martavis Bryant starts to draw extra coverage on the outside, and if Juju can become a valuable enough player where he starts to draw coverage, that'll leave Jesse James wide open uh, for check down targets for Ben. I think Xavier Grimble has a chance at... I guess being the number two tight end, if he can learn how to block a little bit, mostly just because David Johnson can only block. But it's tough. Because well, I think that's watch. why it's going to be Jesse James and David Johnson. you got Jesse James as your receiving tight end, and then David Johnson as the blocking tight end. But, I mean, I you can't make it as obvious as if when David Johnson comes in, you're definitely running the ball either. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. You can't do, like, so exclusive because then every time Johnson touches the field, the defense knows that you're going to you're gonna run it. So I think it'll end up as James Johnson Grimble as far as the depth chart goes. But I think you'll see Grimble mixed in a little bit more than last year. He has some skills in the passing game. He, he's quick. He, he's fast down the seam. He made a couple nice catches, uh, some highlight real catches in the preseason and early in the season. So I think he's a guy who could go out there and maybe catch 15 or 20 balls next, or this year. Any chance you would go out and sign Gary Barnage? Because he's pretty much the only tight end worth signing as far as free agency goes right now. Uh, I don't know what he wants. I don't know what he's trying to get. But, yeah, absolutely. Why not? At least go in the camp with him and see what happens if you can get him cheap enough and then cut him if it doesn't work. I mean, you got to believe he, he's not really commanding a whole lot right now, being that the Browns just cut him. He's like 30-something years old. He's really only had about two or three good years in his career as far as, you know, any type of And he can't stay numbers. healthy. Right, so it's not like he's going to command top dollar. If they could bring him in on a one-year deal, like a one-year prove-it deal, I'd be happy with that. I think him and James combined could mix to be maybe 60 total catches between them, 70 total catches between them. I mean, really, as long as somehow we can get around 40 to 50 catches in like production out of the tight end position, it doesn't have to be exclusive to one player. So if somehow James and Grimble can do that in the passing game with Johnson blocking, I, I, it's it's doable. It's just not the greatest situation. Yeah, well, Ladarius Green signing was a mistake. I loved it at the time. I was always a Ladarius Green fan, but after watching him play with the Steelers, Last season, I mean, it, it, you could just tell something was wrong with him, man. He just didn't look like that explosive guy. Yeah, I wish him well. Hopefully he gets better. Who, who knows if he ever plays football oh, again. Oh, no, though. man. He's, I, I, I bet he's washed up. He's done. <laughs> he's washed up. I don't think he's washed up. His brain's just beat up. Well, I mean, that's part of it. You're washed up. <laughs> 
washed up just means you don't have it anymore, dude. Well, he dude. doesn't have it. He He's gonna truly doesn't have it anymore, man. Head. He's the definition of does not have it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's harsh, man. Oh, That's I'm just harsh. telling the truth, man. It's not like I hate the guy. I still liked, liked him and everything, but it is what it is, man. That's it. If you can't pass the physical, you can't play on the team. Well, that's all I got for everyone. There's not too many tight ends to talk about. And like I said, the other guys, I don't know, they're going to be practice squad jabronis. Anything else for them, Dash? Mm -mm. All right, fans, questions, comments, hit us up on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. Hit me up on Twitter at bet Jim the win. We have about 2 million followers on Twitter. Go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. As always, come back to YouTube, click subscribe, share it with your friends. Fantasy football is coming up. Check out those episodes too.